RTS games are really cool, and today I would like to show you guys how to make RTS type movement in Unity. It's a bit different from the 2D movement, so hope you guys stick around. So to start off, you want to create a 2D object that will you, that you will use as the player. Over here in the sprite, I'm gonna choose something like a background or input field. I'm gonna choose UI sprite though because that's what I always use, and I'm gonna turn this up to something like five, so you can see it. And then now you want to show them the buttons, and I feel like this is a bit small, unless you think it's good enough. Let's turn this up to something like 10. And then put this, add a box collider to it, and that's currently a player. I'm just going to rename this for my own purposes, so I'm going to call this player, or player unit, and that, so player. And then inside here, I'm going to create a few more things. So I'm going to create the small arrows right here, I'm just going to use boxes currently to show it. So I'm going to duplicate this four times. I'm going to call this is each direction. So I'm going to change this to a UI sprite. Like three and th whoops. It's good enough. Zero point like five. Zero point five. And then put it up here. Also add a box glider 2D. And then pretty much do the same thing. So I'm going to delete all that because you know this has everything it needs duplicate it four times and then put it in each direction so down left and right i know wait yeah left so now you can see that all directions are there and if you've clicked play and start um clicking around it shouldn't work i'm going to rename all these to its corresponding directions so up and then second one was down, whoops, down, right, and then left. So now it's all renamed correspondingly, and that's currently all you need. And then now for the player, you want to add in a script. So here, you want to put in C sharp script and unit selection. So this will be in charge of selecting the unit, showing and unshowing these buttons. And then you're going to have to create another script to actually make it move. So you're going to click create and then C sharp script unit movement. And currently we're just going to need that just to move it. So what we want is also we're going to need a button later that will help end the turn so that you can continue moving later on because we're going to make it so that one time you move you can't reselect it and then you can't continue moving it so after these have been all loaded you want to put the selection in the player the parent of all these objects and all this should have the unit movement so when you finish that you want to just double click one of the scripts and it should automatically open visual studio so once it has been loaded you want to go to the unit selection first because we're going to be doing that first and then we want to first remove these two. That's just a habit of mine, but we might need them later. I go by, yeah. So you want to start off to tell the editor or the engine that you're clicking it and that you want to select it. So we're going to put in public void on mouse down. This is a built-in function. It, this automatically tells them that when you click on it, it should give you a function. So put in print which is literally the same thing as debug.log, print, clicked, and then plus this dot name. And then if you go back and then hit play, you should, and then you click on the player, you should see that it prints out in the console, clicked player. So now let's get it to load and then we can click play. And then as soon as it starts, you kind of you can try and click it. You can see that click player comes out. So now you want to just stop and then go back. So now you know that this is working. So what we want to do now is on mouse down, we want to show the select the arrows and all, and deselect it. So we want we're gonna create a few variables. So first we're gonna create a public bool variable to show that you are selected. So I'm gonna make unit selected is equal to false and in here you want to put in unit selected is equal to not unit selected 
So it means that every time you click it, let's say you're not selected and you click it, it'll become selected automatically and it'll just get reversed at every time. So now we have that, you wanna create an update method. So private void update, because we won't be needing this anywhere else. If unit selected, we'll put in that later and then else this will happen. And then we wanna create an array of game objects which I'm going to be calling the arrows, which is the way, the direction we're going to. So then normally people would just do arrow and then these boxes and then zero inside, but I don't like to do that. So instead I'm going to create a for each loop. So for each game object, arrow, and arrows, you want to just arrow dot set active equal true. This way, for each game object in this array, it'll just set itself active. And other way around, you can just copy this and put it in, except this time you change the true to false. So let me just re-explain this. So when you click it and it becomes selected, it will automatically go to this for each loop, which will automatically detect all the game object in this array. And each object in this array will automatically be set active into true. And the other way around, when you click it again, it will become deselected, and instead of turning into true, it will become false. So now if we go back, and just wait for it to load, and then drag everything in, hit play, and it should start working. So here you can see that unit selected bull is here, and the arrows is here. I'm just going to click the lock right here, and then drag all this in. So now that works. And I'm just going to automatically just deselect this. I mean, turn it off. And then I'm going to just hit play. And if I click this, you should see that all of these pop out. And when I deselect it, it just automatically goes down. Perfect. So now you want the player to be moving. And what we want to do is go to the movement script. And here, you want to put himself a public void on mouse down method so when you click on this one it also will do something so also we want to put in something like its own id so i'm going to put this as movement direction so that we know which direction it's going to for example zero is up one is down two is left and three is right this is probably going to be the directions and then here on mouse down, we're well, gonna put in something like if, or in this case, I'm gonna put in a switch statement of movement direction, and then case zero. We we're gonna try and we're gonna let the the player move up. So we're gonna put in transform dot parent. Whoops, hang on. Dot parent, which means this transform parent dot transform dot position is equal to new vector three and then for example zero 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 but then we don't want that so we're gonna put in something like transform parent transform is equal to transform dot parent dot transform and that's it so here we can just instead of putting all that you can just put in parent transform here instead of zero, I'm gonna put in parent transform dot x uh, dot yeah the dot x position dot x and over here since we're moving in the y axis we're gonna put in some kind of increment. I'm gonna hard code this. I don't suggest you do it, but and then create a variable and then put that in. But this is what I'm gonna be doing currently because I won't be using this in the long term. If you're gonna be using this. For a long-term thing, I suggest you put in something like a variable on top. And then zero, because we won't be moving in the z-axis. So after that, this will give you an error right here, like this one, because it's a case state, it's a it's a switch statement, and all cases need a final thing, kind of like return, which in this case is break. And that should c let the error go away. So you can just copy this three times and paste it three times. And here, instead of 0, you'll put in 1, 
two, and three. And here you don't want this because we already mentioned it once, so we're not gonna need that. Whoops. So instead of what I just did right there, I'm going to just create a private transform variable called parent transform. So it's exactly the same. And then in void start, I'm going to put in parent transform is equal to transform dot parent dot transform like that. And then that should be working. I remember one is down. So we're going to put minus one so that it goes down. Case two is going to the left and that's minus one on the x axis. So I'm going to x and minus one. And the third was right, so we're just gonna remove that and put plus instead of minus. Perfect, and that should start working. And we can just remove that. You don't have to remove it, this is just a comment. I'm, I just don't like seeing those. I just put that whenever I need them. And so now if I go back and just wait, there's not going to be any variables inside. There will, but then you... Oh, yeah, we do have to. So, okay, so I made a mistake. So we put it in order. So up, it's 0. Down was 1. Right was 2. And left was 2. Right, left was 2. Right was 3. So like that, if we click play, you just wait. And as soon as it starts, if you click where the buttons are originally are, it doesn't start. You click this and then click that. You can see that it's moving correctly. Like that. Up, down, left, and right. Awesome. So that's all working. But then we want this player to stop working, I guess, after you move it once. Because it's an RTS and you want the opponent to also go. So what you want to do, go back into the script. You want to reference the unit selection script inside the unit movements. So I'm going to create a private unit selection. Unit selection in lowercase u. And then we're going to call this unit selection is equal to transform.parent.gameObject.getComponent unit selection to get it from the parent. And then over here, we can't do anything that will help it stop. So we're going to create another bool. So public bool unit moved. So we're going to check if this unit is moved is equal to false. If it isn't moved, we can just do all this. If it is moved, we're just going to return it. So if unit, if not unit moved, we're just going to hold alt and then arrow keys to move it up. And then tab to indent it. And then if it's not moved, then it'll do this. Else, just automatically go to the for each loop and just move it. But then we need a way to tell them that it did move. So we're gonna go to the unit script and this is why we reference the unit selection. We're gonna put in unit selection dot unit moved is equal to true. And then unit selection dot unit move equal to true and all this the same thing for all this I mean, copy that and put it in in the rest of the case methods and now if you go back and hit play it should be that exact way we wrote it the second you move you can't see this until you end the turn so now if I click play You can see that it shows up nicely, but if I put it like this, I can't click it again, no matter how many times I click, and it's just like that. Nothing else is happening. So then, in order to go to the next turn, we're going to need a button or something like that, or a key. So I'm going to go to the UI and click button, and then something like at bottom, whoops, I don't know how to use this, I'm just trying to look cool. I don't know how to use this, so I'm going to go to the scene view, scroll all the way out, and then just drag this down 
right just like that and then I'm gonna change the text into and turn and then I'm gonna create a new game object called um, turn manager that will manage all the turns that it can display all like the current turn and like you can end the turn and then we're gonna also create a new script called turn manager just like that and just wait for it to load so in turn manager you want to tell the button the second it's clicked you want to reverse all this unit selected or I mean unit moved is equal to true uh, false so what we want to do we want to create a public list we can't do list right now because we don't have the correct namespace so we're going to use using system dot collections dot generic and then public list of unit selection of I'm going to call units and then equal to new list of unit selections perfect so now in public void and turn you want to put in another for each loop for every unit selection unit in units you want to change the unit dot unit moved is equal to false so now every game object I mean every unit selection and units will be changed will change their status will be changed to false so that you can reselect it so now if you go back and assign the button and that should be all I mean there's no other thing we can also use this exact same script to calculate the amount of turns you just had so I can also do that right now in just a second after I do this I'm gonna click a new button I mean you click and then put in turn manager and then you can't do that right now because turn manager does not have the script drag that in units I'm putting something like players right here and then the reason I put list is because most time you're not just gonna have one you're gonna have more than one so you can just store it all in here and one by one it'll go through and do it. I just did that just for you guys. Normally if you only have one you can just put in like a public game object. I just did that on purpose, okay? And then over here you can see that there's turn manager and you can click end turn and that should start working. If we wanted to add a simple turn calculator, put in here using unity engine dot UI. You can also put in public text turn text and then a public int variable called current turn is equal to zero because we start at zero and every time we click end turn we want to increase the current turn so plus plus and then in we want to create a void update method too where turn text dot text is equal to currently on turn and then plus current turn so this way it'll display currently on turn and if this number is five it'll say currently on turn five or with this currently on turn five and that's it that's all you need for a simple score counter as turns counter as well so just wait for it to load and then you want to create a text to show this so let's just try and drag it up here and then scale that up something like that and then i'm just gonna display something like currently on just to text test out how big these words are whoops turn like a hundred just because this probably no one will get that far and turn to white I guess and here you can see that you can go to turn manager select the turn text and if we hit play everything should be working nicely 
from the movement and the stop so you can see currently on turn zero if i click this and click up i cannot select it again until i click end turn it says currently on turn one i can reselect it again do that and just like that on turn two so continue clicking that's what happens and so that just wraps up the video that just wraps up the content for this video if you guys liked it be sure to like and subscribe for more of these content if you guys want to continue learning about how to make an rts just definitely comment it down below or in the discord server i could definitely look into making an rts tutorial series which is something i've been kind of looking forward to and yeah that'd be cool if you guys want to support me you guys can always support me financially on patreon and i'll see you guys in the next video so thank thank you guys all for watching and just things have been hard and i couldn't make any videos but life is just like that i can't make a video every week so be sure to just subscribe and help me support as much as possible if you want to see the previous video be sure to click that box on the left i believe and right on top it should be the subscribe button so i'll see you guys then